Hey everyone, Mitch from Able Cine here in our New York showroom looking at the new Canon C300 camera. Canon really threw the industry for a loop when it came out with their, their terrific little HD SLR cameras that could shoot HD video, 1920 by 1080, on a physically very small camera with, importantly, a really large sensor. You have a Super 35 sensor on here, and that will give you a shallow depth of field look. You have the ability to get there with a large sensor being able to have a certain magnification and uh, that you can really isolate an image. You can have that object in focus and then have it drop off quickly in front of and behind that object so that you can sort of isolate it and give what people call a cinematic look because in the cinema, well, movies are generally shot in 35 millimeter and so they use those same lenses to the same kind of projection and well, it looks that way. But it might not be appropriate for everything you do. Perhaps you're doing a documentary and you're gonna have people moving all over the place and you just wanna be able to have a certain kind of depth of focus. You wanna be able to have more things in the frame in focus all at once. That's just artistically, uh, the look creatively, the look that you wanna go for. Does that mean the C300 is not the appropriate camera for you, that it won't work that way? Well, don't think of this as a shallow depth of field camera. Think of this as an addressable depth of field camera. And that's because there is another adjustment here. There's another feature that's particular to this camera. And it's a sensor that is extremely quiet. It has very little noise. What does that mean? Well, when you gain up, when you have something that's dark and you try and make it brighter, the noise you see in the bottom of the image, that, uh, that fuzz in the background, that is the noise and it is extremely low on this camera because it's extremely high resolution. And by being a very high resolution camera, and also because of the nature of the technology that Canon uses, uh, they're able to just lower that noise floor when they have the output of a 1920 by 1080 image coming out of the camera. You have a very, very quiet camera. That means that you can be free to adjust the sensitivity of the camera, the ISO rating of the camera and be able to push and pull that up and down the scale as you wish, and it becomes yet another control without it damaging, quote unquote, your image, giving you an artifact that you don't like. So let's look at what we're looking at here. This is a uh, two-thirds inch camera. Now the two-thirds inch camera has, uh, if you think of the frame, uh, the diagonal being the longest line, uh, a two-thirds inch camera, it's an 11 millimeter diagonal, whereas on a Super 35 camera, it's a 28 and a half uh, diagonal. So, it's also referred to as your image circle. Now, in order to get the same field of view, to get the same picture out of both cameras, I have to set this, I put an 85 millimeter on this camera, but it's a 32 millimeter on this camera to give that same projection, same magnification relative to the size of the sensor so that I see the same picture. Well, that therefore means by having a longer, more telephoto lens with a higher magnification, uh, it gives a shallower apparent depth of field. It makes it look like I have less range of focus on this than I do on this. But I'm not stuck there because, well, let's say I want to just stop down the iris. There, there's both set at a T2.8 right now. Let's say I just stop down the iris on this camera, on the lens on this camera, so that it matches the relative depth of field that I see coming out of this one. I just did it by eye before. Uh, it depends on the nature of the individual cameras and their built-in resolution and the way they process the signal. But it's about two, two and a half stops. I'm gonna dial this down by two stops from a 2.8 to a 5.6. Now my depth of field in the images appears the same. But this one looks really dark because I just stopped it down by two stops. Well, I can compensate with my ISO. So I'm just gonna bring that up from the 850, which is the nominal ISO of the camera, up to about 3200. And that is gonna give me now an image that's the same brightness that I saw before. And now, having adjusted the iris on this camera, I now have a C300 with a Super 35 sensor with an 85 millimeter lens and a 2 thirds inch camera with a 32 millimeter lens. And the look of the image, the field of view and the depth of field are identical on this camera and this camera. Same machine, I was able to get the, this look. If I chose, I can go much further with it because I'm at 3200 ISO with no real noise. 
I can go much, much further. This camera actually goes up to 20,000 ISO. Now that's a pretty extreme range, but you do have a great range that you can just choose to adjust the sensitivity so that you can then choose to set your iris wherever you want for the look that you want to get out of your shot. You're not trapped anymore by, well, this is the sensitivity of the machine, so you now have to just bring in more light or change your exposure uh, on, the, on the lens. You don't, it's not, no longer the case. I have another tool, the ISO, that I can use to shift the nature of the image to control it the way I want it to look. I can go the other direction if I want. I can open up the iris really far to get the shallowest depth of field possible. This particular lens goes to a, an, uh, an f1.2. Now, I'm going to bring down the ISO a bunch. I could bring it all the way down to 320 ISO, uh, which gets me pretty close to where I was before. But I'm going to put it back to the 850 just because I am, because I'm going to show you yet another control you have built into the camera, which is the ND. And ND is actually it's a little motorized device. You can see it flip in the, uh, the filter. And uh, on the ND level one, it's two stops. I also have two and three. It's four stops and six stops of ND. And at ND level one with two stops, I'm at the same basic brightness that I was at before. And yet, I have a really, really shallow depth of field. I just have the one object in focus and everything quickly drops off and it makes for a different sort of look. So the camera can go whichever way you want it to go based on the subject at hand and what you wish to do with it. It is an addressable, adjustable depth of field camera, which is a pretty unique new thing in our industry. Canon C300, available from Ableton.